just loading up. Going to take my boy Ollie to uh, the second day of the tournament here. His team is two for two. They look great yesterday. Ollie is playing great. Uh, very, very happy. Now, obviously, the only downfall of yesterday was our, uh, was um, uh, the Philly making a break at the fair and Rosie Destream making a break in Chicago. Those are both pretty hard to take, but it happened. It is what it is. Um, now we're at the small burns. Or no, we did the small burns. Tim's burn. Tim's burn. Uh, a lot of changes going on in Tim's burn. Horses coming, horses going, trying to set up for the fall. Austral Hanover's had a great year. Tim has done a tremendous job with him. Mario, you know, this boils all, this goes all the way back to Danny O'Brien toiling throughout the winter with it while this horse trained horribly. And now, uh, went to Mario, you know, and we got him ready to race. Mario did a great job getting the horse ready to race. And then Austral Hanover somehow decided he wanted to be a horse. And man, has he ever become a horse. I said this the other day. Quietly, he's become one of my favorite horses to drive in the entire barn. When you can go into a race knowing that there's a very slim chance a horse will make a break and a very good chance the horse will win, it's, it's a good feeling. And I've done that all summer with Austral Hanover. He's just been a, a real treat to, to race and to drive and um, just been a, a real, real nice horse to deal with. So Austral Hanover will be done for the season after Monday. Very light season for this guy, but good. Good for him. Maybe he'll come back really, really good as a three-year-old. Um, for those of you who don't know, we did sell Fashion Presidente and Enzo Aguello last week. It just Enzo was a heartbreaker because you could tell he has a ton of ability. Now, if they castrate him, give him time, there is a chance he'll come back and be a good, a good three-year-old. And I hope he does because the person that bought him was the person that bred him. Steve Palermo bought Enzo. Uh, he knew that we were looking to sell him, and I know why he bought him. He's, he's rolling the dice. He's going to send him down to New Jersey, try and get a good two-year-old mark on him, which might help the Walner yearling that is selling this year. Uh, it might help the price with the Walner yearling. So Steve really put his money where his mouth is and is trying to double down on on uh, protecting his yearling investment. So good for him. It's a, kind of a, an offbeat way to do it, but smart. And uh, I'm interested to see how it's going to play out. I mean, Enzo, there's no two ways about it. Enzo well has got speed. Does everything right. Trots beautifully. Just wish he had more of that grit, that eye of the tiger, as I call it. You know, if he had a little more, if he had a little less Enzo and a little more Austral in him, I think he'd be a Grand Circuit trotter. And that's what I hoped he'd be. You know, looking at a staking guide, we paid thousands of dollars to stake this horse to everything. And it just has not worked out as of yet. But I could see a horse like him coming on and being a decent three-year-old. But we have to focus on, and really this is what it boils down to, we have to focus on the horses that are right in front of us that want to do good. That's what I'm looking at. So, getting back to it. Austral Hanover, A-plus all year. Just a sweetheart. Enzo, Fashion Presidente. I love Fashion Presidente. He's just not... He's our sixth best trotter in Pennsylvania, right? That's what he was. Nice horse to drive. Tried his heart out. I really like Fashion Presidente, and I, wished, I wish Nate and his partners all the luck in the world with this Colt. Not just on Monday but into uh, the 2023 season. Uh, procrastinator, had, he's back at J uh, Jason's now. We had, this horse got really sick, really sick. And for whatever reason, it's very rare that you see, they didn't want to use pneumonia, but I could tell it was on the top of the tip of their tongue was that he was getting there. Now we got on top of it now, I believe. Everything is going according to plan now, but I think what he's done is, is, is ensured that when he does get healthy, he's going to the field. Uh, we have both him and World for Two over at Jason's Barn now. Had the vet check them out and probably going to give them some time off and focus on January, December, January, February of 2022 into 2023 is where I think they can regain their worth, maximize their, their purse earnings, and then we can probably move them on, if that makes sense to anybody. Silent Assassin has now turned out a very disappointing season for Silent Assassin. She's going to come back in about four weeks and get back to work. She's going to race throughout the winter, and then we're going to see what we can do with her heading into the spring of 2023. Now, for the rest of the burn, Spitfire Overseas was awesome last week. He's got the four-hole or the five-hole going for 253000 I'm staying home. There's no need for me to be here and Mark McDonald, my brother, or anybody else in that driver's room to watch me drive Spitfire Overseas. Sure, I want to go out and drive him. I have no problem pulling up and shooting the three-pointer at one second left on the buzzer. Zero problem. But 
There's other people that, yeah, I, 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 everybody says you shouldn't be so hard on yourself. It's not that I'm hard on myself. I play a role at the stable.ca. This was never, I told people from the start, and I know people maybe didn't believe me. This was never for me to resurrect my driving career. If I can help, I'm going to help. Now, Ronnie Wren jumped up and drove Spitfire last week. Never drove him in his life. So it's not like he's a difficult horse drive. He's turned into an absolute pussycat to drive. For a horse that was bully and hot, it's so nice to watch the horses grow into mature, intelligent animals. Tim has done a tremendous job with this horse. Everybody associated with him. Again, you're going to hear this name through a lot of these horses. Danny O'Brien took care of this or did this horse. And now... You know, I'm well aware that Deb Tonkin was the caretaker all year long. Mike on Austral Hanover. Danny O'Brien was the one that went with both those horses all winter long for the most part. Austral, quite frankly, because nobody else wanted to go with them for the most part. And Spitfire because Danny loved him. Both these horses have turned out great. Spitfire has just turned into be a nice horse. And I would bet any one of those little five toes right there that Spitfire is going to be a real good three-year-old. Um, Tailgate Buzz, another horse, man. Uh, it's just been absolutely phenomenal all year long. Him and Oslo are easily the two best horses in that Stallion Series division. They're picked first and second, I believe, on Monday, and they should be first and second on Monday. I hope if everything goes according to plan, which for these two, it has all year for the most part. Now, the difference between Austral and Tailgate Buzz is Tailgate Buzz still has the Keystone Classic at the Meadows, but before that, he is the Champlain, and I think he has earned the right to go race in the Champlain this uh, on the 15th of September. Horse has been fantastic has been fantastic. In what in what regard would he not be uh, a good entry in the in the in the Champlain? Nothing but a dreamer will be going there. Carter Michael Deal will likely be going there. And although I believe Carter's better and and nothing but a dreamer might be better. Tailgate Buzz is as handy as a shirt pocket and uh, it's an old saying also. And I think um, Tailgate Buzz has more than earned his right to race in a race like the Champlain and the Keystone Classic. And then his year will be over. So Ostro gets some grass a couple of weeks before uh, Tailgate Buzz, but both of them have more than earned it. World for Two, as I said, is over at Jason's. He was a little bit off left hind last week. We, uh, we, um, we uh, um, scratched him. We're going to bring him back and... Um, we're going to bring him back. Brought him over to Jason's. I was just reading the text. Brought him over to Jason's and get him, got him looked at. And uh, will to win Hanover Racing today. That was a little good timing, I think. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But uh, to have that consolation for a horse that never raced in the Sire Stakes, pretty cool. Don't know how she fits it, but great. We'll take it. Short field going for 50. Sign us up. So, will to win Hanover. Good luck to Mark and all the will to win Hanover group today. Not a horrible year. Quietly, this filly's put together like 40,000, taking a mark at 57, and with her breeding, will do us a lot of good in the future. So, with that, still got four barns left. Be back in just a minute.